In this video, we are going to learn how to calculate the energy involved during changes of temperature and also during state changes between solid, liquid, and gas. Let's start by looking at a heating curve for water. Here is a heating curve for water. There are a few things I want to point out and to make you aware of as you're looking at a heating curve. The temperature goes up as we come up this axis and heat is added as we go across. Now I want you to think about what's going on on a molecular level for each of these states as we talk about the heating curve for water. Now heat is a type of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. And we're talking about the energy of motion. We are going to be talking about the motion of the particles inside these different states. So the particles, the water molecules. Now in ice, the water molecules don't have a lot of motion. They're stuck next to each other. They are um, fixed in place, but they do have some rotational, some vibrational motion. As we add heat, the temperature of ice increases to the melting point. At the melting point, if we continue to add heat, our ice is melting and we have both ice and water present. And what's going on on a molecular level is that those water molecules are starting to be able to move past each other. They are no longer fixed in place as they are melting and turning into liquid water. And so there is more movement of the water molecules. Once our ice has completely melted and the only state is water, then if you continue to add heat, the water molecules move faster and the temperature increases until we get to the boiling point of water. At the boiling point of water, continue to add heat and that heat goes into not changing temperature, but changing the state. And it changes, um, it increases the water molecules and it gives them enough energy to be able to break free from one another so that they are independent water molecules. They move very fast and in this vaporization or evaporation period, you have both water and steam present. And that is true until all of the water has been vaporized into steam. If you continue to add heat, your steam temperature would increase. Now I want you to notice that our um, plateaus were at our changes of state and that is because the temperature is constant during changes of state. During vaporization, during condensation, the temperature is the same. During melting and freezing, the temperature is the same. Now we can use this same heating curve as a cooling curve. If we just travel downward, you get um, from steam at the boiling point or the condensation temperature, your steam starts to condense <clears throat> into liquid water. Once all of the steam has condensed into liquid water, if we continue to remove heat, the liquid water cools down, the temperature decreases, our water molecules move slower. We get to the freezing point. At the freezing point, the water molecules slow down even further. They become fixed next to each other freeze into ice, you have both ice and water here. And then once all of the water has frozen into ice, if we continue to remove heat, the temperature decreases. So that is an overview of the um, heating and cooling curve for water. The next thing that we want to look at is how to calculate the energy change during these processes. We will start by looking at calculating energy change during a change in state. So this is where we are either freezing, melting, vaporizing, or condensing. To calculate the energy involved, we would use either the heat of fusion or the heat of vaporization. For water, the heat of fusion is 80 calories per gram, and this occurs at the melting point. So what that means is it requires 80 calories of energy to melt one gram of ice at zero degrees Celsius, the melting point, or 80 calories of energy is released for every one gram of water that freezes. So the, melt, the heat of fusion is used to calculate energy change between liquids and solids, either direction. Heat of vaporization calculates the energy 
required or released when steam condenses or water vaporizes. So this goes between a liquid and a gas, either direction. And for water, heat of vaporization is 540 calories per gram. Let's look at an example problem. Here we have 5.5 grams of liquid water at zero degrees Celsius freezes. How much energy is released? When you are reading through an energy calculation problem, I want you to look for some key words. The key word in this problem is freezes. It is telling us what we are doing and we are freezing the water. That's a change of state. We are going from liquid to solid. Because we are going from liquid to solid, we will use our heat of fusion as a conversion factor. To solve this problem, start with the amount you're given, 5.5 grams. Use heat of fusion as a conversion factor, 80 calories per gram. Grams canceled and you're left with calories and energy unit. Then you can do the math, 5.5 times 80 gives us a value of 440 calories. And that is already in two significant figures, so that would be the final answer for that problem. Now let's look at calculating energy when temperature changes. When we are calculating energy for temperature changes, we are going to use a heat equation. Heat equals mass times change in temperature times specific heat. Now, specific heat is a measure of how much energy it takes to change the temperature of a specific amount of a substance. The specific heat of water is one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. So what that means is it takes one calorie of energy to change one gram of water one degree Celsius. Our example problem for this, how much energy in calories is required to heat 65 grams of water from 25 to 50 degrees Celsius? The key word for this problem is heat. We are changing temperature, and we also see that by the fact that we have, we're going from 25 to 50 degrees. So if we are changing temperature, we are going to use the heat equation. So let's plug in our values to the heat equation. Heat equals mass, 65 grams, we get that from our problem, times the change in temperature. So here's where you just subtract the temperatures from one another. So 25 from 50 gives us temperature change of 25 degrees Celsius times the specific heat. Specific heat for water is one. Now specific heats will be given to you. You can look them up on tables in your book. They are different for every substance, but it is not something you need to memorize. Then we can do the math. 65 times 25 times 1 gives us a value of 600, 1,605 calories. We want to round that to two significant figures, so it would get rounded to 1,600 calories. That is using the heat equation to calculate energy during temperature changes. Now let's look at one final example where we are combining those together. Here's our example problem. How much energy in calories is required to melt 2.75 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius and then heat to 25 degrees? First thing you want to do for an energy calculation problem is to look for your key words. Here's one, melt, that indicates a change of state. Change of state means we would use heat of fusion or heat of vaporization depending on what state we're changing. Another key word is heat. We are changing temperature, so that would be a heat equation. 
So for this problem, we are doing two different processes. We are changing state and changing temperature. Changing state, melting, changing temperature, heating. Those are two separate equations. The first equation that we're gonna look at is the one to calculate the energy required to melt the ice. If we're melting, we're going between solid and a liquid, we would use heat of fusion as a conversion factor. Start with the amount you're given, 2.75 grams. Use heat of fusion as your conversion factor, 80 calories per gram. Do the calculation, 2.75 times 80 is 220 calories. That's how much energy is required to melt the ice. We're still at zero degrees Celsius because during changes of state, our temperature doesn't change. Separate problem to calculate the amount of energy needed to heat up our now liquid water. We use our heat equation where heat equals mass, still 2.75 grams, times our change in temperature. We went from zero to 25 degrees Celsius. Our change in temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Our specific heat for water is one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. 2.75 times 25 gives us a value of 68.75 calories. The final thing to solve this problem is to add those together. 220 plus 68.75 gives us a value of 288.75. Now we need to round to significant figures. Two significant figures is what we want to round to. Our temperature is has two significant figures. It is a um, measured value, so we would round it to 290 calories. And that is our final problem to look at the energy calculations. So when you are doing problems involving energy calculations, make sure to look for those key words and then to see what calculations you would do for them.